In this video, I'm going to be discussing 23 clothing and accessories that gained popularity or had its origins in the military that became streetwear. Let's begin with number one, the t-shirt. The t-shirt has its origin in the 19th century where laborers in America would cut their jumpsuits in half to deal with the summer heat. The t-shirt started to be manufactured in 1898 and in 1913 became part of the US Navy's uniform. This would eventually make it into other branches and into World War II. And after World War II gained popularity, especially in the 1950s, when Marlon Brando and James Steen and the t-shirt became an outer garment. Although this garment does not have its origin in the military, the military did give the t-shirt the ability to become mainstream. The Brenton shirt has its origins in Europe, was worn by sailors of Brittany. On the 27th of March, 1858, the French War Act issued sailors to wear a navy and white long shirt. This was to aid in spotting men who fell overboard. Now again, this was an undershirt. This gained popularity among the Russians, and in the 19th century, the Tsar Navy adopted this as well. Now this striped shirt being transferred to ground troops has its tradition, some say, of Soviet sailors who refused to give up the shirt when they transferred to ground troops. And that's why you see Russian soldiers have this striped shirt underneath their uniforms. In 1917, Coco Chanel, made this shirt popular among women and it became successful and became a symbol of artists and intellectuals. Now the great coat or watch coat has its origin in the 19th century for soldiers on watch or guard duty, hence the name watch coat. The coat was designed for warmth and protection against wind and cold weather. It features a collar that can be turned up to protect the neck and cuffs that can be turned down to protect the hands and a drape of the coat going below the knees. There was also a rain cape that could be attached to protect the soldiers from wind and rain. The trench coat has its origins in World War I. Soldiers had wool overcoats and this wasn't good for wet weather. So the trench coat was invented. Trench coat has a smaller silhouette, lighter and waterproof. There were many innovations in the 19th century of making a waterproof fabric that led to the trench coat. The pea coat was designed for the Dutch Navy in the 1800s. Pea means coarse wool in Dutch. This gives the, the sailor great maneuverability and the double breast acts as an extra protection of warmth. The turtleneck has its origins in the 15th century where knights would use it to protect the knight's neck when wearing chainmail. Royalty and high society adopted the fashion as a symbol of status. Moving forward to the 19th century, polo the necks were worn by fishermen, laborers and sailors. From the 20th to the 21st century, this was worn associated with academics, philosophers, artists, intellectuals, and also upper class. The flight jacket was made for World War I pilots. The open air and uninsulated cockpit made this necessary to protect pilots in cold conditions. These tended to be longer before they were shorter with the development of closed cockpits. In 1927, the US Army had its Type A1. The A1 was shorter and featured a knit collar, cuffs, waistband, and buttons before being replaced by the A2 that had a zip closure with a wind flap and high collar. The next was the M422 in 1940 and then the M422A in 1941. The difference between the two is the M422A had a pencil slot to the left pocket. The next was the G1 jacket in 1947. It's important to note that other countries had their flight jackets, but the United States ones became more popular culturally. The B-3 was introduced in 1930s and was designed for high altitude bombers to keep the pilots and crew warm 25,000 feet up. In 1937, the D-1 jacket was given to ground crew who were not flying but worked in cold conditions. This jacket was simple, allowing the user for ease of movement in cold weather. The B-6 was introduced in 1939 and that was more lightweight and an improved version of the B-3 jacket. In 1941, there was the B-7 jacket or B-7 Arctic Parker for both flight and ground crews working in harsh cold environments. Due to the high cost of producing the jacket, it was discontinued in 1942. The B-10 was also introduced in 1943, but had a very short stint as it did not match the sheepskin jackets. In 1944, the B-15 brought back the fur collar and the jacket itself was made from various materials from cotton rayon, combination and later nylon. Some small details on the jacket were the pen pocket on the upper left arm sleeve. The next bomber jacket was the MA-1 in 1949, and this is the most replicated version today. The fur collar was replaced by an elastic knit collar. This was better for parachute harnesses. Fur was no longer needed for warmth, 
The jacket was made of easy clean materials such as nylon and lined in bright orange that could be reversed and used to help rescue visibility. By the late 1960s, bomber jackets grew in popularity among civilians and today is a popular jacket. In 1935, the Army began a four-year study to develop the more practical combat jacket for field use. One attempt was the M1939, but was not suitable for field use. In 1940, the US Army adopted the first field jacket based on a civilian jacket with input of Major General James K. Parsons. A lesser known variant was the Arctic field jacket that was longer, made from more water-resistant fabric and buckles for tightening around the wrist and waist. There are many complaints of the M1941 field jacket from poor insulation from the thin lining. The light cotton shell provided little protection from wet weather and wind and the lighter shade of OD3 faded quickly to a beige colour compromising camouflage. Some soldiers continued to wear the OD cotton field jacket through to the end of the war. The military had a lack of proper and suitable clothing for more specialised soldiers. In 1942, paratroopers received their own uniform. The M1942 paratroop uniform with the M1942 field jacket. It was made of OD3 cotton twill, coming down to the upper thighs with four front pockets. There were problems with this uniform. The OD3 colour was too light for European woodlands. The uniform didn't have adequate stinching in the crotch that resulted in tearing. Tearing also occurred at the knees and elbows and were reinforced with canvas patching by soldiers. This jacket was worn by paratroopers when they jumped on D-Day. The infantry uniform was lacking compared to the paratrooper uniform. The M1943 uniform with the M1943 field jacket was a way to unite all the concerns among the soldiers. M1943 field jacket came down to the upper thighs similar to the M1942, had a detachable hood, drawstring waist with a different pocket design compared to the M1942. It was coloured olive drab shade number 7, OD7, a darker and greener shade compared to the M1942. The uniform was also designed to be worn in winter by using separate liners for the jacket and trousers that would come to be known as the M1944 Eisenhower jacket. In 1951, you had the M1951 field jacket. Then in 1965, you had the M1965 field jacket. Field jackets eventually started to make it into civilian fashion and were used to protest the Vietnam War. The tanker jacket was used by US tank crews. Designed on the 10th of February 1941 by the US Army, these jackets were worn as part of a three-piece suit, including matching helmet and trousers, that was intended to be a winter suit for tank crews in the US Army. The first model was the number 26, the revised version the number 26A. The jacket's stylish looks, comfort, practicability and warmth made it popular among all soldiers, even officers, eventually becoming popular for civilians. The Eisenhower jacket is a waist-length jacket developed for the US Army during late World War II. It was intended to be worn on its own or as an insulating layer beneath the M1943 field jacket in colder weather. The M1943 was developed by the Quartermaster General and was a great building block of multi-environment all-season combat uniform. The Air Transport Command recommended development of a waist-length wool field jacket that could be worn under the M1943 field jacket. In autumn 1943, the Army Air Corps prototype jacket was sent to the Chief Quartermaster of the European Theatre of Operations for review and possible adoption. The commanding general was Dwight D. Eisenhower. Eisenhower already requested a waist style jacket as he admired the British battle dress jacket. It was standard issue in November 1944 and was also designated an Army's dress and parade uniform. This jacket was updated post World War II and eventually into civilian wear. The Safari jack jacket was introduced in 1900 as part of the British Army's new uniform. This was developed to be lightweight and practical for regiments fighting in the South African heat in the Boer War. These were made from tough cotton drill dyed in khaki. Khaki dye was cheap and also blended with the landscape. The military safari jackets was, were designed with bellow pockets, revere collars, shoulder epaulets, and belted waists. Some of these features were removed when they became popular among civilians. In the 1850s, John Partridge manufactured a duffel coat. In the 1890s, a version was supplied to the British Royal Navy from various manufacturers. In World War II, all British troops, even Field Marshal Sir Bernard Montgomery and Lieutenant Colonel Sir David Stirling, had a camel-coloured duffel coat made from Milton wool and had the nickname Monty Coat. The battle dress was first worn by the British in 1938. The large pockets of cargo pants were originally designed for British troops to hold field dressings, maps and other items. This was copied in the US paratrooper uniform. Khakis date back to the 1800s with British soldiers in India. The bright red uniforms of the British made them easy to spot. 
English officers noting that their Indian privates only wore lightweight cotton garments smeared with soil and tea leaves to blend in with surroundings was inspiration for their uniforms. British Army officer Harry Lutzman made his corps of guides wear a different uniform. Cotton cloth was dyed in mulberry juice resulting in a yellowish shade named khaki using the Hindu word for dust. Khaki was first worn by the British Indian Army in 1846. Khaki trousers were adopted by the US in Cuba and the Philippines during the Spanish-American War in 1898. Imported from China, the American soldiers called the pants pantaloons chinos, using the Spanish word for China pants. In 1902, chinos became a part of the US Army uniform. Chinos have become a very popular trouser, especially a symbol of middle and upper class. The chinos along with a sport jacket or blazer, Oxford shirt and loafers became the Ivy League look. Fatigue pants go back to 1952 where the US Army reviews its uniform. The new uniform is to be practical and comfortable and not interfere with the soldiers' movement. The uniform was so comfortable that it lasted from 1952 to 1989. The trench boot was used by the US in 1917, however it did lack waterproofing leading to trench foot. There was a 1918 upgrade called the Perishing Boot after General John Perishing who oversaw the production. This upgrade improved waterproofing. A well-known combat boot is the U.S. Army M1943 combat boot. Jump boots were designed by William P. Yarabor in 1941 as a test officer in the 501st Parachute Infantry Battalion Provisional Parachute Group. These boots were long and completely leather and were highly sought after. An interesting point about tucking your trousers inside the boot or blousing one's trousers over the boot was only allowed to be done by paratroopers who graduated jump school. These boots were commissioned by Cairo cobblers by South African soldiers whose boots had failed them in desert terrain. British officers would visit Cairo's markets and have these boots made. The suede upper on crepe sole was lightweight and grippy in desert terrain. Nathan Clark, who was a soldier in the 8th Army, noticing these shoes worn by officers in their downtime in Burma. He learned about these shoes and how the British officers had them made in Cairo's markets. He brought the idea back to his family's company and in 1949, Clark's desert boots debuted in the 1949 Chicago Shoe Fair, after being featured in the Esquire magazine, they grew in popularity. The necktie has its origin with Croatian mercenaries serving France in the Thirty Years' War. The mercenaries wore knotted neckerchiefs that were liked by the French. Louis XIV began wearing a lace cravat around 1648 when he was seven. Over time this adapted to various fabrics being tied around the neck of men that led to the necktie. Belts have been important for holding swords, weapons, ammunition and other items around the soldier's waist. This could also have suspenders that would help bearing the load on the shoulders. Traditionally belts would be, have been made of leather but would be replaced by other materials making them cheaper to produce, more durable with less maintenance and produced in different colours for camouflage. Belts have also been used to hold trousers up replacing suspenders. The wristwatch was previously only worn by women with men using pocket watches. This changed towards the end of the 19th century with military men starting using them for synchronizing maneuvers. One example of synchronization was the creeping barrage or moving barrage in World War I. This was an artillery tactic that required synchronization between artillery and infantry. The artillery would move forward incrementally with the infantry moving behind it. Watches that were minutes out could be detrimental. These watches were designed for trench warfare and were also needed for military pilots. Watches were also worn into World War II and are an important item to a soldier. In the American Civil War, soldiers made their own ID tags out of scraps of cloth or paper that was attached to the soldier's clothing. In 1906, the US Army began issuing ID tags that were made of aluminium and stamped with the soldier's name, rank and serial number. In World War I, other countries adopted ID tags or dog tags. Dog tags as well as the soldier's uniform are a very important part of the soldier's identity if he is captured as he is given protection and rights under the Geneva Convention. Soldiers caught with no identification or worse in an enemy's uniform are treated as spies or saboteurs. And combats engaged in espionage have no rights to prisoner of war status. In 1929, U.S. Army Corps Colonel John A. McReady worked with a New York-based medical equipment manufacturer to create sunglasses for pilots. McReady was concerned that goggles would fog up, reducing visibility at high altitudes. In 1936, the prototype was known as anti-glare, had plastic frames and green lenses to cut out glare. These went on sale to the public and in 1937 and 1938 had impact resistant lenses. 
The glasses were redesigned with a metal frame in 1939, promoted as the Ray-Ban Aviator. In 1936, Ray-Ban was founded as a civilian division. The first Ray-Ban would be sold as sport equipment, providing real scientific glare protection. This was prior to World War II, and they had not taken the name Aviators until 1939. The large lenses on the Aviator are not flat, but slightly convex. This design tries to cover the entirety field of vision of the human eye, reducing the amount of visible light, infrared radiation, and ultraviolet radiation from entering the eye from any angle. US General Douglas MacArthur would be photographed wearing Ray-Ban aviators in 1944, and there would be a line of sunglasses dedicated to him in 1987. Other sunglasses were the Army Air Corps D-1 sunglasses made by American Optical in 1935. These had a US AC engraving on the hinge bridge these were superseded by the AN6531 flying sunglasses in November 1941. These lenses were made for both the US Army Air Corps and US Navy, hence the AN. The US government specified the shape and color of the lenses, which was green tinted that prevented 50% of daylight. Type 1 lens provided insufficient protection from sun glare and were superseded with dark 2 type 2 lenses. Various manufacturers made the lenses. These glasses had a teardrop shaped convex lens, plastic nose pads and brow bar. The nickel plated frame was made of copper based alloy to prevent offsetting compasses. The teardrop shaped lens was to help pilots who were looking down at their instruments while in flight. After World War II, the AN6531 Comfort Cable Aviator sunglasses were issued as number MILG6250 glasses with different lenses such as Type F2 lenses for Arctic and Type G2 Aviator sunglasses with darker lenses until the Type HGU4P in 1958. Aviators became part of culture in the 1950s and grew in popularity since. BDUs were developed by the US Army in the late 1970s to replace the Vietnam era uniform. BDUs are made to be roomy for ease of movement from a durable ripstop fabric with large pockets, reinforced stress points and adjustable waist tabs. These were used throughout various combats in various camouflages. BDUs are also non-camouflage prints and are also worn by agencies and civilians. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to stick around on my YouTube channel because I might have some videos that you might like.